Uh, we, we spoke about Engel and Veblen, uh, and now we are going to think a bit about uh, the eternal growth criticism. Uh, uh, for this, we will we will visit the ancient Greece. Uh, later, we will visit Greece, and we will see how ancient Greeks already spoke about sustainability. Okay, then there is nothing new on her. Okay. The first concept I want to speak about is Jevons Paradox. How many of you know Jevons Paradox? And Jevons Paradox, as you have here, or Jevons effort, occurs when technological progress or policy increases efficiency in a resource and so we reduce the amount we need of this resource but the falling cost of this efficiency increase global consumption. Do you understand? No. Yeah. In, in, my, in my area, my area is very hot. Alicante, water is a huge question. Huh? We produce oranges, lemons, fruits, okay? We use a lot of water, but we have no water, okay? Efficiency in irrigation systems has to use an increase in the amount of water that we need. <coughs> 60 years ago, we have no pumps, no uh, technical irrigation system. So the water only arrives to a small space around the river. Do you understand? With pounds we improve efficiency so we increase the area and we increase the demand of water we special irrigation system we reduce the amount of water per hectare but we increase the hectares so we increase the amount of water this is the one part of efficiency can lead to an amount, to an increase in the use of resources. Cars, for instance, cars consume less or more petrol than 50 years ago. Modern cars use less or more petrol. Less. Each car, each car, no. Now a normal car can consume six, seven liters per one hundred kilometers. Okay? Fifty years ago it was twenty. Twenty liters. Now each car consume less. But but we have more, more cars. So we consume more. Do you understand the paradox? So efficiency can increase the use of resources. Right? This is the main point of the eternal growth criticism. Optimistic people would say that we are clever, we will solve everything, we will create a new technology. It's simply not true. <coughs> okay? I, I told you several times when I insist. The question is, 
electric car or public transport. Which is, which is the, the solution to mobility? Electric car or public transport? Public transport. What are we talking about? Electric cars. Is, is, that, is, is a perfect example of Jevons paradox. We must change the way we do things. Okay? Each of us must do it and global policies must do it. Both, both approach are required. Okay? This is the best, a good example. A good example of the general paradox. Okay? You understand the joke? Yes, okay, thank you, thank you. Please, uh, please log your 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 micro, please. Okay. Wow. Again, here you can see a, a very good example of Jevo paradox. Eh? Case. The very important economic principle, the a key concept. Here you. Let, let, let's speak a bit more about 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 Jerome paradox. And when when do when do we have a Jerome paradox? Always, always. We will have a Jevon paradox when the effect of the increased demand is higher than the, uh, than the saving cost. Uh, when the effect from the increased demand predominates and the improved efficiency results in a faster rate of results when this happens, we have a Jevon paradox. We can see this graph here. In the first graph, we have a 20% increase in efficiency that goes a 40 increase in carbon. Okay? So consumption increase, a full consumption increase. And we have a Jevon effect. We consume more petrol. Okay? We consume more water. We consume more electricity. Okay? We, 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 now, now we have special lights and LED, LED uh, consume less. Each, each LED consume less. So what we what do we do? We put more light, so we consume more. Okay, so zero effect. Well, the demand is inelastic. Eh, a twenty per, for instance, a twenty percent increase in efficiency goes a ten percent increase in travel. We don't have. Zebon okay? It depends on all the in consumer behavior, everything is about demand and elasticity. I really think it's the most important concept. Okay? And here you have a good example of the the Jebon effect. Any questions? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, of course. But as a consumer, as a consumer, the amount that you're going to pay 
for, for instance, for, for the petrol, is a key aspect. If the petrol goes up, you will move to public transport. Yeah? See? If petrol uh, is affordable, you will buy a, a car. Yeah? If water if water is cheap, in Spain, we have a swimming pool in each house, each bed. In my area, every single family wants to have a swimming pool at home instead of using public swimming pool as you have here. Yeah, yeah. Is another very good example. No? The cost of the water should be more expensive in Spain. Just one more question. So the quality of the technology, like the technological efficiency, is more connected to the quantity, not the quality. Because if the quality yes, is yes. Evolved, then the price could be also higher. In technology, when we, it's a very good question. In technology, when we speak about yesterday. I told you that efficiency is a key concept in the use of resources. Eh? The way we define efficiency is a central part of the model we build. How we define efficiency. Eh? It's, uh, it's the same as when I mark an exam and the, and the task. If the exam is 90% of the final grade and tasks are only 10%, efficiency for you is in one way. But if task homework are 90% of the final mark, and the exam is only 10%, efficiency is totally different. Okay? Remember Platon and Aristotle. Everything is about Platon and Aristotle. We have been educated in Platon's way of thinking. Perfection, we, we look for perfect love, perfect life, and that, this doesn't exist. Aristotle is the real life. So the, the way we understand efficiency is the way we will behave. Okay, did I answer to the question? Yes. Any more questions? Well, okay. Here you have uh, some conclusions about Jevons paradox, but in the food sector. Our society needs cheap food. Why? Why our society needs cheap food? Because we need a lot of quantity and we need it fast. Almost. Before the break, I spoke about Engel Law. The poorest people for the poorest people, the amount of money, of money they spend on food is very important. If, if food price goes up, poorest people will suffer. So we need cheap food. Okay? That the, this is one of the basis of our society. We need cheap food. 
Well, re reducing, reducing the price of food increase consumption. What do you think? Do you think that the reducing price of food increase consumption? I think for for a little bit, yeah, it's gonna be a little bit above, but it's not gonna like you know skyrocket. Really? I think so. Uh, would you, uh, do you think we will have? Do you think we will have had a break as we had if we pay the food? Just today. Okay. Yeah, no. Maybe it's also not marginal utility. Oh, uh, marginal utility. But, 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 but we have a perfect, we have a perfect, a perfect example in our behavior uh, half an hour ago. I had, I had two watermelon and a banana. I didn't need that. I had a wonderful breakfast, but it was free. None of you, none of you needed this food. None of us, but it was free. So we eat. Okay. Well, if you reduce uh, the the reducing the price of food, increase consumption, and this increase <coughs> is not related to cheap or expensive food. Okay. If we if we reduce price. We eat more. Eh? That's all, always. We are like that. Eh? Yeah, but until a little bit. Like, I had coffee, but I cannot drink like six coffee, even if it's for free. So, I can go for like two coffee if it's for free. But so then there must be a little bit of consumption because it's just gonna explode. Yeah, of course, it depends on each person. But but I, I, I will tell you a very old story. When I was I was twelve twelve nineteen eighteen two. Well where were you in nineteen eighteen two? In the class. Okay. Okay, I came from I came from a very small village in in a land of Valencia, a very small village. At that, at that time in 1982, there was, there was in town, the Monday after Sunday Easter, eh? the Monday after Sunday Easter, the cooperative of the village offered a big meal to everybody, and it was free, okay? Normally, the tradition, as we are in Valencia, was to cook paella, right? And a, a huge paella eh? for, for 1,000 people, a huge one. But this year, the company decided to change and to offer a, a proper menu. So, meat and cake, okay? Because they, they wanted that, that we we sat on a table instead of, of hanging around with the pile, okay? So we sat. All the all the villas sat together. Okay? And one of and you didn't know uh, who will be at your side. Because the okay was putting everybody together. Right? So the man that was in front of me was a very old man. A very old man. He had like 
the civil war. Okay? So he was late. He was late and he, he sat and he saw the, the, the soap. And he asked me, soap? Soap? What is the rice? What is the rice? Soap? And another man told him, okay, don't complain. We have no money. This year we have no rice. It's just soap. Eat the soap and shut up. Okay? The man ate 17 dishes of soap. 17. Okay? He was like a. a well, please. <laughs> when he saw the meat arriving, he wanted to kill us. So the limit is a very relative context. It depends on your living experience and your expectation. If you know, if you are, why are we, why are you sitting here listening to me? Because No, because you know that food and bed are warranted. All of you have food and a place for sleeping warranted. If this wasn't the case, now we were looking for food and a place to rest. And if you find food, you will eat as much as you can. Okay? Now, more questions? This is very important point because sustainability, sustainability is about how to stop. Sustainability is about how to stop. And if, if I don't know what will happen tomorrow, maybe I don't stop today. <coughs> Because I don't know what will happen tomorrow. Okay? Now, making food cheaper is, is, is quite often uh, an idea to make people less poor. Okay? However, making food cheaper can produce obesity an illness. How many of you had some cakes? No. How many of you choose fruits in the break? No, no, no. Just think about it. Just think about it. How many of you don't, you didn't need that food? First one. Now, with free food, how many of you choose fruit and how many of you choose cake? Okay? So, cheaper food, cheaper food, if it is not quality food, can produce a lot of illness. In supermarkets, what is cheaper, fruit or processed food? It's Jevon effect. It's another example of Jevon effect. Well, efficiency, in this case, efficiency is defined as the cost of food. Well, we, we, we reduce the cost of food. We improve efficiency, but we have a problem. We eat more and we, we do not eat healthy food. Okay? And then you have 
Jangan. Bad. And then, you can, you can. When I, I spoke about this, it's about the, the foreign consumption. And we have three, the increase in the use of the resource can be analyzed in three parts. Direct rebound effect, in indirect rebound effect, and economy-wide effect. If we are going to promote sustainability and we are policy makers, we must be aware of these three effects. Okay? This is for policy makers. Bye. Bye. And you have the, the, the example of the, of the fuel efficiency. The indirect effect will incorporate the increased consumption of other goods as consumption of all other goods increase, the production of this good will increase, so efficiency can lead in an increase of consumption. Okay? So efficiency is not always the solution. Right? Demon power. How are you? Are you hungry? Now, let's go to Greece. Let's go to Greece. Well, in fact, it's wrong, but it's Greece. It is wrong, but wrong is, is Greece. Eh? Okay? You know this point? Greece is culture. Rome is Civilization. And do you know Elisiton? Elisiton. Any of you have heard about Elisiton? It was a king. A king of Thess the he was the king of Thessalia. Thessalia was an ancient kingdom. Eh? And he decided that he wanted a bigger table for the living room. He was the king. He, wa he, he had a wonderful living room. But he wanted a bigger table. So he went to the, to the forest and he ordered, he ordered his servants to cut all trees in the sake grove of the matter. The matter, you know the matter? The matter is the Greek goddess of agriculture. Okay? The matter in Greece says, says in Rome. Okay? Syri you know cereals? You know the word cereals? Eh? Cereals came from Ceres. Ceres was the cause of agriculture and he, she gave us cereals. How do you call beer here? How do you call beer? Where are you from? Uh, from Croatia. Croatia. How, how do you say beer in Croatia? Beer. Yeah. Pivo. Are you from Croatia? Croatia. So how do you say beer? Hey? Eh? Spigo. Spigo. Yeah. In, in Spain, in, in Spain, we say cerveza. Cerveza also came from Ceres. She was the goddess of agriculture. Okay? So, let's go back to the history of Elisipton. He ordered to cut the forest devoted to Ceres. It was the, it was the forest devoted to the goddess. Okay? 
So, the, the nymphs, the nymphs, you know, the nymphs, the ladies, the ladies that, that were taking care of the forest asked, asked him, please stop, please stop, please don't cut this tree. This tree is the boat to sell. Please respect. Please stop. What, what did he do? He didn't stop. Even Ceres appears to him and she asks, please stop. He tried to kill Ceres. Okay, do you understand the situation? Okay. The matter says couldn't couldn't punish him because the matter is a, a good goddess. She cannot punish, so she must ask to an to another god to punish any system. And she called Limos. And Limos. Limos was a female deity. He was daughter of Elis. Elis is the goddess of discord. He was a very, very bad goddess. Okay? So, Limos was the spirit of hunger. So, Limos entered into Elisipton. And he was, he became always hungry. He couldn't stop eating. Okay? And the more he ate, the more hungry he was. He couldn't stop. Eh? Because you didn't want to stop, you will, not able, you will not be able to stop. You understand? So, he had to sell everything. He had to sell everything to buy food because he couldn't stop. Even he sold his daughter Mestra as a slave. Eh? However, Mestra was in love with Poseidon, another god, so Poseidon gave her the ability to, to change, so she could escape every time, but his, his father sold her again, 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 again. Okay? Okay? And what happened? How this story finish? What do you think? The daughter just escaped. Interesting. <laughs> you are saying that his daughter killed him. Yeah, I interesting. It's, very, it's, it's a very end of it's a very interesting end of history. Good. Any other idea? He ate her. Yeah, he ate the daughter. What? He ate his daughter. Yeah. Very interesting. <laughs> you? The same. Hey. Any other idea? Maybe because the daughter of Poseidon, maybe he tried to make a deal with Poseidon? More and more. Think. Think for a bit. Think for a minute. Okay. It's good to think. Yeah. Sometimes, sometimes it's good to think. Come on, think. Feel 
is a feeling of thinking is good. He ate himself. Almost. He ate himself. Okay? This is, for me, the perfect need of sustaining. If we do not stop, if we do not change the way we do things, we will finish eating ourselves. You understand? Huh? Well, next concept is the tragedy of the common. This is a perfect example of the tragedy of the commons. Huh? I have one. Okay, okay perfect. Uh, and the tragedy of the commons is a situation in which individual youth, individual user, when they have open access to a resource, they tend to finish their resource. Okay? Do, do you know, have you been in London? Yeah. How many of you have been in London? Oh. There one? Nobody, nobody more has been in London? Bah, do you know how you Hyde Park. Yeah. Have you heard of Hyde Park? Eh? The Lovers Park? Do you know why Hyde Park is in the center of London? Because it was a private place for the king for hunting. It was just for his use until the beginning of the 20th century. So it wasn't used by all the population. It was just for the king. If Hyde Park had been used by everybody, it wouldn't exist. The very good example of the tragedy of the common. When everybody used a resource without limitation, we finish by finishing the resource. Okay? So we need we need public limitations. And we need public limitations. Because individuals behave as their own profit. Uh, each of us look for our own profit. Okay? You have many examples? And yes. here is a very good example of a uh, natural resources for producing meat. Huh? Okay. Again, we need to stop. Remember, remember Elisipton. Remember Elisipton. We need to stop. We need to change the way we behave. Huh? Any question about this? Yes. 